Hi folks, my name is Mark Eisenman and I promised to make a little video about a tune called Peace Peace, which actually isn't even really a tune. It's just a left hand back and forth between two chords. Um, Bill Evans recorded this and you need to check it out, but you gotta know that what we're talking about here is the process of playing jazz or really in this case, improvised music. Um, and I find this a very useful exercise for anybody to get in touch with discovering how to improvise from the very beginning at the piano and not be intimidated. Uh, the other thing is that it's very useful for learning how to pedal. So we could talk about all kinds of things, but I, I think it's important to get into it. Uh, the other thing that you should check out is Bill Evans on the tune called Some Other Time, which goes like this. I'll, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but it's a Leonard Bernstein composition. I think that Bill Evans actually was going to play that in the studio and just never got out of the intro, which is this. So that's the first thing. The music is in front of you. It's to be played only in the left hand. The, uh, you know, memorize it. It's only one bar, two chords, two bass notes. It's not hard. But even just playing the left hand alone with no right hand is an exercise in pedal technique. So you need to really think about that. So I'm gonna just play the left hand alone with various pedal ideas and I don't have a camera on the pedal but if you listen really closely you're going to hear some half pedaling or and some messy pedaling and some trying to be clean pedaling and I'm basically using the pedal just to bridge the gaps of the hand movements that's my first goal in other words as clean as possible so here I'm going to just demonstrate a little bit of that with no right hand notice what I did I didn't play the exact voicing I wrote I left the G out uh, in B2 I did this and then I put it in there Bill Evans does that all the time you just pull out a note if you want if I'll do it with as written So the pedal goes down the minute, the little, as soon as I lift my C up. Not before, now. Now, as soon as I play this chord, the pedal comes up. I'm not letting that C ring. If I do, I can find a happy spot and then play. If I push it all the way to the ground, it's gonna be a mess. So one of the tricks to pedaling is to learn exactly where the felts touch the strings. So this is before you even start playing anything in the right hand. This is worth a, a good hour of fooling around. Well, say 15 minutes anyway. See, and I lifted my hand. And when I did that, the pedal went down to catch it. I only, I'm only pushing it. You see how many sounds? That's about two millimeters, millimeters of moving on this piano. Whoops, that wasn't far enough. And now, the pedal comes up. The hand's down. I don't touch the pedal until I'm ready to pick up the hand. to do more messy pedaling still I must clear the pedal between the two chords otherwise I'll get this mess you 
get that E and F ringing together. The function of the first chord is a resting chord. And the function of the G is to move to the C. They do not want to be together played at the same time. Therefore, you must clear the pedal between the C and the F. Another way to say this is, if one chord has notes in it that are semitones away from the chord you're going to play next, you've got to clear the pedal. Now I'm thinking one and two and three. I didn't clear the pedal there and it works. And I can do that too. But you see it's getting a little messy. So you can play with this. Now you can see what happens. If I start adding the right hand and I'm pedaling too much, I'm going to get the it gets to be very messy. Please excuse the piano is a little out of tune because of COVID. I can't get my tuner over here. So I'll try and I'll use a soft pedal to uh, try and tone down some of the unison intonation issues. Now I'm thinking time here. Two, three, four. I'm probably at about metronome 50 or something like that. Anyway, let's just see what happens. I'll put the pedal down. The left pedal, the una corda pedal on the grand, shifts the keys over and the hammers over. Sometimes it takes a note that sounds like this. It makes it a lot nicer because the left string of the three it was not struck, so that's a good trick. Now, to add the right hand, the first thing is I'm just trying to listen to the sound in the room. And the other thing is, if I add the right hand, I don't want to see it at all. In fact, I'm going to face this way. So I'm only looking at the left hand because I need to to make sure I know where I am. Now, I, if I really know the thing well, I don't even have to look at it. But it's more important that you play the left hand perfectly. You see that I did there, I played two, three, four, one. You could play two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So you can move that G over to beat four. And you can, if, there I was talking, so I, the C came out on the eighth note. It doesn't matter. The form has got to be there. And it has to be metronomically right. So again, you might turn the metronome on. Sometimes it's nice to pedal the G and the C and let the pedal stay there. But that time I didn't. So it should be very meditative. You could actually play this rubato to You should always feel the beat, even if the beat is two, three, and one, and two, one. Time on a rubber band. But I'm gonna try and be steady. Now the first thing I do is add a note and I don't know what it's gonna be. You play in the dark. And you play as, I can see my screen there. Oops, I gotta watch my left hand. Now, I don't need to worry about what I played. I don't even want to know what it is. Now, I'm just listening to the sound of this note against... I might even hear a note in my head now. This note probably wants to go down on the white notes. That might be an A and a G for all I know. But they sound pretty good. how I can make now I'm going to take my hand move it around sorry I need to stop looking oops see I hit the crack I don't even know where I am I'll try that 
now I know that fingers and whatever's on. Why don't I just keep my hand there? And those are my two notes. I could also go. So I'm not trying to pre-hear anything. Oh, now I have three notes. The first two I played. Not, right? Notice that note. You might notice that it sounds good over both chords. Maybe this note does. Oh, that's the D. There's an octave. How could that be wrong? Play with some rhythms. resting note. So I'm learning about how things sound by experimenting, not by theorizing. How about us interval? Oh, that's interesting. It's terrible clash and then it, it sounds okay. Oh, why? Probably because there's an F. It wants to be here. So there's a note that you play on the C that sounds weird and it's the F. But, it, but it's not. That is a shape that sounds like that. So why not those three notes? Why, how about I go up and do it? Ah. And why do we have to only play white notes? As you play higher, you can get away with funnier notes, but you're not judging here. And notice I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm not looking at the keys. I'm looking at the left hand bass part. what the note is, but I don't have to even say, you know what it is. What do these four notes sound like going up from this point? The other thing is, this is a piano forte. This is the piano part. This is the forte. Oh, I 
you see it pulls you down. In other words, it's not like you're playing a lot of lines here. Like you're not playing bebop lines. You're just listening hard. Now that is the way a baby learns. The first thing a baby does is come out and start making noises. And once in a blue moon, it'll say something like ma. And when ma is said, mom goes crazy. And then the kid learned, hey, that's a good sound. I should make that again. And I think that this exercise is like being a child. You just learn how to hear first. Let the hearing teach you what to move. So that's my take on how you teach a classical or non-jazz player how to improvise. Notice, no reading. Time. Okay, so that's it. I'll post it now. Bye-bye.